Hi everyone. Um, we'll give everybody just a, a couple minutes to pop on and before we get started. Uh, but let me go ahead and introduce myself. I'm Dr. Shannon Winters. I'm an audiologist at Hearts for Hearing. I'm also the manager of the adult clinic. And today I'm going to talk to you about COVID-19 and related issues with hearing loss. So again, we'll just wait a little bit to allow people to pop on and then we'll get started. All right, well, hopefully everybody's joined us by now, but this is also recorded so you can catch it later. So again, I'm Dr. Shannon Winters with Hearts for Hearing, and we're gonna talk about COVID-19 and hearing loss. Uh, so there have been multiple case reports of auditory and vestibular or balance sy symptoms um, in individuals with COVID-19. Now, since COVID-19 is a recent phenomenon, this research is limited and current research is primarily in the form of case studies. So this often relies on self-reports and questionnaires and doesn't have an in-depth evaluation of symptoms. Um, but the main purpose of these studies is to raise awareness for the potential of auditory and vestibular issues as a result of COVID-19. So these reports indicate that hearing loss can occur in individuals with all degrees of COVID-19. In some cases, hearing loss was the only symptom, and in other cases, they had more severe symptoms of COVID-19. In the cases of hearing loss, most individuals reported have a, having a sudden change in hearing, and this occurred either in one or both ears, though most commonly it was occurring in just one ear. So this is something we refer to as sudden sensory neural hearing loss. And sensory neural hearing loss refers to damage in the cochlea or our organ of hearing. And so aging or noise exposure are other forms of sensory neural hearing loss. Sudden hearing loss can be caused by a variety of issues and has been around long before COVID-19. If you experience a sudden change in hearing, it is important to have a full audiologic evaluation immediately to determine the best course for management and to be seen by an ear, nose, and throat physician. Medical management can sometimes improve, cases, uh, improve hearing in cases of sudden loss, but there is a limited time frame when this medical management can be effective. At Hearts for Hearing, we perform comprehensive diagnostic hearing evaluations, and we work with multiple ENTs throughout Oklahoma to ensure that you are getting the most urgent and appropriate treatment. While hearing loss um, with COVID-19 sometimes resulted in improvement in hearing with medical management, and not all cases was medical management effective for improving hearing. Fortunately, if hearing cannot be recovered following a sudden change, many forms of amplification or hearing aids can help address these hearing issues. Another symptom reported following COVID-19 is tinnitus. Now tinnitus is the name for sounds in the ears such as ringing, buzzing, clicking. Um, it's when someone perceives a sound with no external cause. So several reports show that tinnitus can occur following COVID-19. It can occur in an individual who has never experienced tinnitus before, or it can occur in someone who has already had tinnitus, it's just become worse or more pronounced. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, at Hearts for Hearing, we have a complete tinnitus clinic to address all levels of severity of tinnitus. Um, tinnitus can also be associated with hearing loss. So if you have been exper experiencing any ringing or noises in the ears, a full audiological evaluation is recommended. This way we can assess hearing or any other ear concerns and how to address them. Dr. Kristen Barton, one of our other audiologists, will be hosting a Facebook Live session over tinnitus at a later date, so I hope you will join us for that as well. And then the final ear-related symptom that has been reported with COVID-19 is vertigo. Vertigo is um, associated with balance, and Dr. Annie LeBeer, our resident vestibular audiologist, will be hosting a Facebook Live session on that also. 
So I hope you tune in for that one as well. So while the research in, with COVID-19 and hearing loss is still fairly limited, there are enough reports to show that there are hearing concerns that can be related to COVID-19. And the most recent research suggests that the current strain of COVID-19 that is affecting India has more uh, relation to hearing difficulties as well. So it is something that is still to be monitored and still something to be aware of. If you have been experiencing any concerns with hearing, tinnitus, or dizziness, it is important to have an evaluation to assess these symptoms. While the causes of the auditory and vestibular symptoms in relation to COVID-19 are still unknown, there are a few theories that exist to explain why we're seeing these symptoms. And these can include inflammation of the nerves, so either the auditory vestibular nerve can become inflamed as the result of the virus resulting in these symptoms. It's possible that it's also related to an immune response of the body. Um, another theory is that the antibodies are mistakenly attacking the ear, resulting in these concerns. And then our final theory behind this is the vascular disorders caused by COVID-19 are disrupting the blood flow to the ears. Our ears are actually very sensitive to blood flow issues and we sometimes refer to them as the canaries in the coal mine of our cardiovascular disorders. So that this means that ears tend to be the most susceptible part of the body to cardio cardiovascular issues. So if you have any form of cardiovascular disease, a hearing evaluation is recommended. We want to be sure we're catching any of those underlying hearing concerns. Some concerns individuals may have during this time is going out to doctor's offices and making sure the environment is safe. And at Hearts for Hearing, we are taking extra measures to ensure patient safety during this time. We ask that all of our staff and guests continue to wear masks in the building as our patient population includes those who are medically fragile and those who are children who are not eligible for the vaccine yet. Um, we also are allowing enclosed spaces, such as our booths, to air out for 15 minutes before bringing another patient in. This gives a chance for all the particulates to settle down before bringing another patient into that room. Um, many of our infection control measures for COVID-19 have always been important aspects for hearing health care. Our ears are a breeding ground for various viruses, bacteria, and fungal infections. So to ensure the safety of our patients at all times, we take our standard infection control measures. And this is gonna include the disinfection of touch and splash surfaces after each patient. So that's gonna be things like tabletops, um, and then the headphones in the booths, all those touch and splash surfaces are disinfected. And then any equipment that is in the ear canal or comes in contact with the ear that's reusable is sterilized completely before reuse. Um, our um, providers are going to be wearing gloves with any activity that's going to have the potential for contact with wax. So this is going to include handling hearing aids or cleaning wax out of the ears. And all of these measures are implemented regardless of COVID-19. So you can rest assured that the environment at Hearts for Hearing is safe. So while we have these links of changes in hearing as a result of COVID-19, a lot of individuals who had hearing loss prior are noticing that more with the use of masks. Um, so masks have introduced complications for a lot of individuals. Uh, masks take away our visual cues and a lot of times when we develop hearing difficulty, even without realizing it, our brain is helping us fill in the blanks by reading lips and facial expressions. And obviously with masks, we have lost that um, ability to read those lips and facial expressions. So it's brought into focus a lot of individuals having hearing difficulties. And it can be frustrating both as someone with hearing difficulty or communicating with someone to not be able to communicate effectively with masks. Uh, so if you have noticed any difficulty understanding individuals while they're wearing a mask, it can be an indication that you know, uh, a hearing concern is noted and a full hearing evaluation can tell us if there are hearing concerns. In addition to having full diagnostic hearing evaluations, we also offer free hearing screenings, which can give us a snapshot picture of are the ears healthy and is it something where we need to complete a full hearing evaluation. 
Um, those either a free screening or a full evaluation can be set up through our clinic and our contact information is listed on our Facebook account. And I'm sorry, I forgot to mention at the beginning that if you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the chat um, box as well. Uh, so some of the issues that um, uh, have presented with COVID-19 and hearing difficulty in addition to the masks have been the plastic barriers that have been put up in a lot of um, checkout lanes and a lot of businesses. And these also can reduce the amount of sound that is getting to an individual. And whenever we have hearing difficulty and an, a new challenge is added, such as the barriers or the masks, it can really highlight those difficulties for us. So if you have noticed that people seem muffled or you're not hearing as well with those partitions, that can also be an indication of hearing concerns. Um, it does look like we have a question here about, um, I mentioned earlier that hearing loss can occur in just one year with COVID-19. Um, and the question is, um, can hearing loss be treated in just one year? And that is a great question and the answer is yes. We have several different forms of technology available to address hearing concerns in just one year. And a lot of it de depends on the degree of severity of that hearing difficulty. And so traditional amplification or hearing aids can often be used to address hearing concerns in just one ear. Um, but for instance, if we have one ear that was completely affected by whatever the cause of that sudden change in hearing was and no longer has any what we would call usable hearing, there are a few different options we have to address that. Um, one of those is a piece of equipment called a cross or a bicross. And it really looks just like a traditional hearing device, a traditional hearing aid. Um, and how that system works is that uh, one on the poorer hearing ear, so the ear that is no longer really functional, a device is worn that looks like a hearing aid and that is then transmitting sound to the other side where a receiver is worn. So the sound from that poor hearing ear is transmitted over to the better, better hearing ear, so you still have access to sound information from that side. And again, that's called a cross or sometimes a bicross. Um, another form of treatment for that single-sided hearing difficulty is something called a bone-anchored hearing aid or an osseointegrated hearing aid. And what this does is it's similar to the cross system in that we're taking sound from that poor side to transmit it over to the better hearing ear. But how this system works is it's a surgical device. So there's a surgical component that is placed into the skull and that will vibrate the skull to stimulate the ear on the other side. So again, sound coming in from the poorer side is uh, taken by that device, vibrates the skull and then delivered over to the other ear. So both of those systems are about taking sound from the poorer side and delivering it to the better hearing ear. There has been advancements in cochlear implant technology that's now allowing for cochlear implants in certain individuals with hearing loss in just one ear as well. And that can vary based on the type of hearing difficulty and the degree and also some insurance guidelines as well. But that is something that has been more recent in developments of treating single-sided hearing loss. All right, looks like we've got another question here. Um, and so this question is, let's see it there. Okay. Um, so this question is about um, the vascular disorders and their effect on hearing. Um, so the question is, um, do all types of vascular disorders affect hearing. So as I mentioned, the ears are very susceptible to issues with blood flow and even little disruptions of blood flow to the ears can result in damage. And it can be of varying degrees of difficulty as well. So anybody with uh, heart health issues or any form of cardiovascular issues, um, it's important to have regular hearing assessments to make sure your ears are not seeing, a, or we're not seeing a decrease in hearing. Um, a lot of times hearing loss is going to be more affecting our high frequency components, which are our clarity components of speech. And with those, uh, those changes can be a little bit more subtle, a little bit more gradual. 
So we're often going to see issues like difficulty understanding and background noise. So in restaurants or crowds, it might be difficult to distinguish what somebody is saying. Or a lot of times people will report hearing but not understanding or missing that clarity, the crispness of sound. This can all come from high frequency hearing difficulty. And with the case studies with COVID-19, most of the hearing loss was found to be in the high frequency range as well. Um, another issue can be difficulty understanding the television or on the radio and are having to turn up that volume, not so much for the volume, but for that clarity. And this can often lead to uh, disagreements in the household about where the TV volume is set or blasting people out of the room with that TV volume. And so all these can be uh, related to that high frequency hearing loss. Um, so feel free to type your, your questions in the chat box. A few more questions come in. Um, so a question here of what are some of the types of medical management for sudden hearing loss? Um, so one of the most common forms of treatment of sudden hearing loss can be different forms of steroids, um, but that is something to discuss with the ear, nose, and throat physician as far as medical management for sudden change of hearing. Um, with the cases of COVID-19 and sudden hearing loss, there were varying reports of the effectiveness of the medical management, such as the steroids. Um, in some individuals, there was some recovery of hearing. In other individuals, there was not. And there had also been some concerns about the use of steroid treatment in individuals with COVID-19 because of the effects it might have on some of the other symptoms. Um, that is something that's in the realm of a medical doctor and a physician. Um, so certainly that'd be something that you would be discussing with the ear, nose, and throat physician. Um, but those are certainly some options out there for medical management. But again, there is that limited time frame. So anytime we have concerns with a sudden change in hearing, you wanna get that evaluation immediately. And if you're calling to schedule um, with, a, with an office about getting in for that appointment, be sure you mention that you've, you've had a sudden change in hearing, um, whether it's one or two ears, uh, so they have that information to know to get you in urgently. If possible, give a time frame on, on how quickly or how uh, recent those symptoms were. And because that, that immediate uh, intervention is important for that as well. And again, with all of our COVID-19 information on hearing difficulty, we're still very much in the beginning stages of knowing how COVID-19 is affecting hearing, uh, but there are enough studies to indicate we have consistent concerns with, that, uh, with hearing that being a possible symptom of COVID-19. So please feel free to type in any questions in the chat. Um, so here is a question about tinnitus. Um, question here is what are some of the treatment options that can be done with tinnitus? Um, so when we're doing an evaluation of tinnitus, we're going to look at the severity, the bothersomeness of tinnitus in that individual, and that can influence our, um, our treatment or management options um, with that. And again, this is something that Dr. Kristen Barton will talk about more in depth in her presentation. Um, but there, there certainly are intervention methods we can use to make it less bothersome and help improve the ability to manage tinnitus. And a lot of people ask me, is it tinnitus or tinnitus? And technically, um, it's tinnitus, but you can pronounce it either way. All right, well, it looks like we have one, another question here. Can hearing loss from COVID or sudden sensory neural loss come back by itself without treatment? So as far as it relates to COVID-19, I don't really um, have any information on that just because of the limitations of the research at this time. Um, with the sudden changes of hearing, you know, depending on the cause, um, we don't, sudden change in hearing may not always be sensory neural, so sometimes it can be related to an ear infection, and in those cases, sometimes that can resolve. Um, but until we do an evaluation, we do not know what the cause of that hearing is. And because we do have that limited time frame to manage most types of sudden hearing loss, 
it's always important to get in for treatment. Um, we don't ever want to leave it because once you're out of that window, that time frame, there really isn't anything medically that can be done to manage it. So anytime you experience that sudden change in hearing, it's best to get it evaluated, get in as soon as possible. Excellent question. A couple more minutes for questions, and if not, we'll wrap it up. All right, well, um, thank you very much for joining us today uh, to talk about COVID-19 and hearing loss. I hope this was informative for you. And, and be sure to check us out on our website, heartsforhearingaids.org, for additional information. And thank you very much, and have a good day.